In this video, we will discuss repeated measures designs. Earlier, we discussed four randomized experimental designs where the independent variable varies between participants. But in a repeated measures design, the independent variable varies within participants. Rather than assigning participants to different levels of the independent variable, in a repeated measures design, participants are exposed to multiple levels of the independent variable. So each participant is repeatedly exposed, and after each exposure, the dependent variable is being measured. This design is considered as randomized design when the order of exposure to the independent variable is random. Suppose we want to investigate the effectiveness of a new drug in reducing migraine attacks. The participants in our sample are people with migraine. In the most standard approach, we randomly assign the participants to one of the three dosages. But in a repeated measures design, we assign participants to all three dosages, low, medium and high, one after another for three weeks, for example. In this case, the independent variable dosage is a within subjects vector or within vector because it varies within participants. The arrows show that the order of the independent variable varies randomly. So some participants start with dosage 1 and end with dosage 3, whereas others start with dosage 2 and end with dosage 1. We can compare this repeated measures design with a randomized three-group design. If the participants were randomly assigned to one of the three dosages, we would call the independent variable a between subjects vector or a between vector, because it varies between participants. In a repeated measures design, within vectors can be combined with other within vectors or between vectors. In addition to the within vector dosage, we could investigate the between vector gender. So a group of men is exposed to all three dosages and a group of women is exposed to all three dosages. Now we can investigate if a higher dosage is more effective for one of the two groups. We could have also tested the effect of dosage and gender without using repeated measures, but with a between-between design, with men and women assigned to one of the dosage conditions. However, the advantage of a repeated measures design is that it provides more sensitive measures of the effects of the independent variable, but also that fewer participants are required. If you wish to have 40 observations for each condition, you would need 120 people who are willing to participate for a between participants design. Whereas with a repeated measures design, where the independent variable is a within factor, you would only need 40 participants to obtain the same number of observations because all participants are tested three times. Not all variables can be used as a within factor in a repeated measures design. For example, Individual difference variables, such as gender, cannot be used as a within factor because those cannot be manipulated. Variables that are also not suitable for repeated measures designs are variables with a long-lasting effect, such as alcohol. If we use repeated measures designs, we must be sure that the effects of the first level of the independent variable are gone before exposure to the second level, and so on. So to summarize, in a repeated measures design, participants are exposed to multiple levels of the independent variable. So each participant is repeatedly exposed, and after each exposure, the dependent variable is being measured.